the Apostle Paul in the book of Philippians chapter number 3. This is what he said, forgetting what is uh, uh, behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And see, the Apostle Paul was looking at his life. He was persecuted in the church. I mean, he persecuted the church, and then later on down the line, he was reaping what he sown, and he was persecuted within the church. And the Apostle Paul could look at that, and you know, he could have held on to a lot of things. He could have held on to all those times that he had been beaten, that one time that he was stoned and dragged outside the city and left for dead. And he could have held a grudge in his heart and said, I'm never going back to that city. And let me make it more modern day. I know individuals, I could call names today. I know individuals that say, oh, I was, I was hurt at the church and I will never go back into the church. I was hurt at the church because this pastor or that pastor hurt me. Well, well let me tell you something, friend. This, this may be a divine revelation to you today, but I want to inform you that pastors are not perfect. Did you know that? That there are pastors. See, the Bible says, For we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is no perfect pastor. I don't care how perfect he may look and how he may act. Friends, there are no perfect pastors. We all sin and mess up from time to time. But see, the thing that we have to remember is this. There is a new day in Jesus Christ. And when we do sin, when we do miss the mark, when we do disappoint other people, that we're willing to ask God's forgiveness and we're willing to pick up and move on. When somebody's hurt you in life, listen, don't totally reject Christ and reject the church and reject family and reject friends. You realize that we're just all imperfect people in an imperfect world. Amen. Listen, there are things that you've done and I've done in my own life that we're guilty of, that we're ashamed of. I can promise you this. If we had some way that we were able to open the door of every heart in this place here today, I can assure you there are things in my heart and there are things in your heart that you are ashamed of today. And maybe you're here today and you have this thing in your heart and God has spoken this new thing in your life that He wants to do. And and maybe you've thought in the past, I could never ever aspire to do this or to do that or to be this or to be that. And yet God has given you hope today and given you courage today and spoke truth into your heart from the Scripture today. And His powerful Holy Spirit has has validated that in your life. And you know that that God is calling you today to rise up to a new thing. And He's given you all these promises to meet every need that you have according to His riches and glory. To forgive you of every sin that you've ever committed or ever will. And to know that they're forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ, God's only perfect Son. To know that God has given us a promise that He'll never ever leave you. He'll never ever forsake you. Listen, I don't care how terrible and horrific cancer is. God is with you right there in the middle of it. Don't matter how traumatic that divorce may have been. God has been with you through the middle of that divorce. Doesn't matter that you've come to the end of financial ruin in your business or in your home and many calamities may have taken place. God has has given you the promise that He has always been with you and He will always be with you even into the very end of the age and He's going to give strength to the weary and power to the weak and He's going to lift you up and make you strong because you are a child of God.